afternoon, Sam. Sam, did you see what I did there? I mean, I am so excited. We we're hitting every time of every day this week. I know. Well, I haven't left the um the place that we're in for I think now six days. Um, because there's. Uh, the weather in Texas is so bad that there's like no power, no water, no food. Thank God we have power. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, another little quarantine going on. Yeah. uh, Plus the snow, plus the snow, (laughs) which is funny because it's like not that much snow. (laughs) It's like a little sprinkle and people are outside just going, Oh my gosh, like, what is this? Because South Texas has never had anything like this before. No, never. You know, I was looking, cause I'm, you know, originally from Dallas. So I was looking at pictures from back I'm howdy y'all howdy um, we know it doesn't really go down the drain that's Such right, that's right. <laughs> it's Australia mixed with Texas but I was looking yeah. at photos of the highway there and people are walking down the highway because yeah so much snow on the highway and it's not even that there's so much snow. It's just that there's no infrastructure to have like no. salt for, for, for mm. people to salt the roads or like plow the roads. So people can't drive anywhere. You know, like in Montana, we just came from Montana. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's so they had that dialed in. I mean, there's mm-hmm. like 20 inches of snow and people are still like doing their thing, going to work. Like it's not an <laughs> issue at all. Within within an hour, the roads are fine to drive on. But it's just that nothing like this has ever happened before. Yeah, no, you can't, no, you cannot blame the Texans because it's literally, I remember growing up there, we had like a dusting of snow, like it wouldn't <laughs> even stick to the ground and people were like, okay, everything is canceled. School's canceled. We're yeah. canceled. <laughs> everything has been canceled. And I don't, Every- I didn't also know that the North Texans and the South Texans kind of mm. have a little bit of a rift. I didn't know that. I was just like, guys, I'm Australian. So <laughs> like, don't beat up on me. Like I have no effing clue. Okay. Um, but the North and the South, like they, the they North, fight. They're like brother and sister. It's like the civil war all over again, right I in the know. middle of Texas, you yeah, know, right in the middle of Texas. Mm-hmm. They are not happy. So who do we have on today, Roxy? Because oh. this, it, I'm going to let you introduce her, but, oh, she, you know, I've fangirled over her forever. Mm-hmm. Um, she's actually my age. And I remember when she first got on the scene, I was a young girl who just moved to uh, Los Angeles and I watched her entire story unfold. Mm-hmm. And I remember mm-hmm. going to um, the Bel Air Presbyterian Church in Los Angeles and they had an Easter service mm. up where this, the, the, the Rose Bowl, uh, not the Rose Bowl, you know, that big amp- amphitheater. I don't oh, the know. Hollywood Bowl? The Hollywood Bowl, yep, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I saw her from the corner of my eye and I was like, oh, I wish I was her. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I was just like, she looks like she's living just the best life. <laughs> Doesn't she? And know? then all oh, you manifest everything because <laughs> look whose podcast she's doing today. Today, today. No, you know, it's like one of those things. I remember growing up, you know, part of me, like, you know, I always was like, I'm going to do this when I grow up and this time I grow mm-hmm. up. And I really wanted to be a singer you did but yes but you couldn't sing but i couldn't sing (laughs) i could not sing so i was like okay we're gonna check that one off the list but i am thrilled that our guest has one of the most beautiful voices i've ever heard oh my god right don't you just love like yes hearing her sing so without further ado we have the amazing Catherine mcphee foster on the show today oh my gosh (laughs) what an introduction Uh, well we need a good introduction that's so crazy that you you saw me um Easter Sunday. I was living my best life because I was praising Jesus. I right? know. <laughs> when people say that, like, you know, because of the show Pretty Little Liars, they're like, oh, we saw you this one time. And I'm like, you are a freak weird fan. <laughs> like, what a freaky thing to, like, say to me. And then I just did it to you. So it's like, it comes full circle. No, but it's, it's funny because you'll see, you'll remember, like, just random. But I remember that Easter Sunday. And you, you remember do? me. Yeah. I don't remember you. <laughs> <laughs> don't exactly remember you but um you maybe i would have you come up to she me was the girl in backstage trying to stalk you remember like yeah. knocking on the door was the like, weirdo let me out. being like <laughs> <laughs> But let's go a little bit. Let's delve into your mm-hmm. massive life that you have lived in a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And we were looking through your Instagram because that's what we do when we have guests on. <laughs> and your bio says like, no life is perfect, right? Um, yeah. you know, everything on the outside looks perfect, uh, but it actually isn't. Is that how you really feel? Do you feel like it's, you know, sometimes it's it's hard to live the life of Catherine McPhee? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I think I wrote that uh, on my bio for Instagram because yeah. I think I just in general, I, I, I struggle, I wrestle with the love and hate 
of social media. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll find me at times like where I'm really active and I'm posting things, but also be being very aware of like the pitfalls, pit, pitfalls, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty British. I like that accent. Pitfalls, pitfalls, pitfalls. pitfalls. <laughs> um, pitfalls of, you know, social media and like just refreshing the page and, oh. you know, like the dinging of the phone and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it, it, it's been structured to make us obsessed. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I love it and hate it all at the same time. And I think that probably a lot of people feel the same way. I think there's some people who, uh, embrace it more than others, like more than I do. Um, and I just go in and out of it. And I really do feel like Instagram is, and I do appreciate, I do appreciate people who are really candid and, or self-deprecating. I I enjoy being Mm self-deprecating, um, to like, you know, sort of expose the irony of social media. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's probably why I put that because I, I oftentimes just people that I follow, I think that it's just like this perfect portrayal of their life. Mm, And it's just so not like that. I mean, everyone knows that. Right. But yet yet you still get wrapped up in like falling into a rabbit hole, watching someone's Instagram page and just going like, Oh my God, they look perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just like plays Mm -hmm. games with your mind. So, you know, it's interesting. Kevin and I talk about this a lot on the show about, scrolling through Instagram and, you know, comparing yourself to other people and looking at, you know, this girl's feed and seeing what's going on. And Tamin actually had a really good point though. She said that she doesn't follow, um, a lot of the, uh, the people that make her feel bad about herself. Yeah. The aspirational accounts. Right. Right. The aspirational accounts. It's more like the real people and the real deal. And I agree with that too. I feel like I do the same. Do you, is that like what you use too, as far as like, like, first of all, do you even compare yourself on Instagram to other people or and if sure. you do, do you kind of just select the people you want to follow based on that? Sure. Of course I do. I mean, I think it's like, I'd be, it'd be silly to say that I don't, but I, I would say that, yeah, I don't, I would, I've actively following people that bring joy and spark joy and not, um, there's a girl who lives in my building. We live in a condo building and she's on like the top penthouse floor and she's really active on social media. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I've who had, is she? <laughs> spell her name? Is that her name? Mommy song. <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. Her name is no, no yeah. don't bring her up because I'm saying anything negative. Like mm-hmm. she is someone who's super active on social. This is like, obviously her everyday life. And it's, um, but I give her credit that she's sharing some stuff with like IVF struggles and da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Um, I just still find it a little bit. It's like, I, it's both sides kind of like, it's, I struggle with both mm-hmm. sides where okay. it's like a portrayal of, um, of the perfect life and then also sharing too much. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, I, I respect both mm-hmm. because I, I think that's like the world that we live in and to, to act like it doesn't exist is just sort of naive, but Mm -hmm. I I struggle with both sides where I'm like, Oh, I want to share, you know, I mean, I'm about to have a baby and I took me a long time to do like a Instagram post about being pregnant in the first place, because I feel so, I always feel like I'm being a cliche, right? Like pregnant. And then like, now I've got to do the baby bump photo. There's like (laughs) social things that you have to follow. Mm -hmm. And Look, a bunch of my friends are like, oh, are you going to post, you know, cause they knew I was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I'm not going to post that I'm pregnant. Like, and then of course we're out in Santa Barbara and they take photos of my stomach sticking out. And then mm-hmm. they say sources, mm-hmm. sources confirm that, you know, she's pregnant by the way. I'm like wearing the weirdest like workout t-shirt. I have <laughs> <it>. um, <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and, and I, I, so in some ways I almost prefer that because mm-hmm. I don't ever want to assume this is my Instagram page. Mm-hmm. I guess if I could like sum it up, I never want to assume that my life is so important mm-hmm. that people are waiting for me to announce that I'm pregnant mm-hmm. or waiting to post the first photo of my baby's foot or hand or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just want it to be like a page that people enjoy um, and they know what it is. And it's like not a super active page. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. I just want things to like spark joy and be positive. And I don't want to have like any crazy angles for people, Mm -hmm. but everyone's, I mean, everyone's page is different, right? So Mm -hmm. some people have like a real social page where Mm -hmm. they're trying to 
um, give information about a cause or whatever. And it's like, I like to do all my little causes. I guess it's, it's, there's so much information. You can know so much about people now Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. I enjoy this, right? Like I enjoy Mm -hmm. getting on a podcast and sharing things about myself and being able to explain things in context, right. Opposed to like a glimpse of something and a photo. So Mm -hmm. this is what I really enjoy. I love talking and I've lost my voice many times in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're in the right place then. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And I agree with you. Like, I think it's maybe because as actors and as a performer, which you are, it's like you were told the narrative used to be like, be secretive in your life and be and be public in your work in a way, if that makes sense, like show up in your work delve into these characters and then be mysterious. Right. And now we have all these social media platforms where it's like, no, take that lid off being mysterious and really Mm -hmm. delve into vulnerability. And I struggle with it. Although Mm -hmm. I do share a lot about myself. And the reason I share a lot about myself is I shared something a couple of years ago about, I don't know if it was anxiety or eating disorders or something. Yeah. And the amount of people that came out of the woodwork that said, thank you Mm -hmm. for sharing something that was painful. There's purpose in that pain. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you have helped me. And I'm like, oh gosh, now Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a duty for me, not for everyone. Everyone feels differently and the way that they help other people could be different. I feel like there's a duty for me to talk about my secrets um, because they don't keep us safe mm-hmm. in a way to connect with other people to help their healing. Right. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, but I do struggle with it. Like I don't tell people would be probably shocked to hear this, but I don't tell everything. I definitely have a few secrets <laughs> okay, so, that in. I'm not going <laughs> to bring to light because maybe they're just too dark or too mm-hmm. painful for right. me. So I mm-hmm. do feel like there's still that veil, but I always say to my husband, like what happens if, you know, one of our shows that we're working on um, uh, creating right now, what, what, what happens if one of them goes really, gets really big, right? And then I've shared too much, but. Mm. Right. Yeah. The, and the thing that like, this is, I think we have this, what you're saying relates true to me. I, there's no rules anymore, right? Like mm-hmm. there's A-list actresses that are on Instagram and mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Reese Witherspoon is super active on Instagram and mm-hmm. she's been huge blockbuster movies and been nominated for Oscars. There's no rules anymore, but to go back to where I was a college student, it's funny for me to be saying this because people would probably be like, well, she went on American Idol. Like there's nothing like that's a reality show in some right, ways, right. In some um, way, but, but-, but my thinking from when I was 18 years old, I went to a conservatory for theater mm-hmm. and we had this amazing, his name was Stephen Oak. Stephen McConnell. And he was like a very serious theater teacher. And I remember him saying he had a British accent, you know, like mm-hmm. British, British, British professors make mm-hmm. you seem even, even better than they <laughs> are. Um, and he was talking about how Kate Winslet, like doing the cover of a magazine was so ridiculous because, you know, we're supposed to see her not as Kate Winslet. We're supposed to see her as mm-hmm. Rose or whatever the like famous mm-hmm. roles that she played. So that always made sense to me. And in my mind, I always wanted to be an actor, right? Even through going on American Idol. So mm-hmm. that always like that sort of traditional way of being an actress um, that is no longer traditional is mm-hmm. still in my mind. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting you talked about like this, the eating disorder stuff too, because when I was coming off Idol, I was like really open about, Mm-hmm. I was very young and I was really open about how I'd really struggled with, with eating disorder and how American Idol was actually this thing, this focus that I needed to kind of, um, get a hold of all of my like issues. I mean, when I say get a hold of all of my issues, right. it's something that takes time. And, but I really devoted a lot of time to kind of working on it. And, um, and then I chose to like, you know, do an exclusive with people magazine. And mm-hmm. I was so young right. and I remember feeling like, oh no, I really exposed myself. Right. Mm-hmm. It felt like too vulnerable. And then I didn't feel comfortable when anyone would ask me about it. Right. Like mm-hmm. I didn't want to suddenly only be known for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's sort of the, the balance, right. Like mm-hmm. of trying to, but it is true nowadays with social media and like podcasts is that I can have a conversation that doesn't become like a, a, a square in a tabloid right. or a headline in, in people magazine. It can actually really be a conversation about like the journey and it puts things in context for people of, um, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it's, whether it's food or body weight issues, mm-hmm. it's like, it does help people. And that's, right. 
that's what's important. Mm -hmm. You know, going back, I think a lot of us has, have struggled with eating um, issues, disordered mm -hmm. eating, eating disorders. Yeah. You know, it kind of um, runs the gamut a bit. But for you, when you were kind of, you know, in the middle of it, you know, oftentimes um, we have eating disorders because we're trying to control a part of our life that and where we yeah. feel the rest of our life is sort of out of control. Was that the same for you? Was it kind of like in that in that way? I don't know. I mean, it was I mean, when it was like really in the height of it yeah. being bad for me, I think. I don't know if I could identify it as being a control thing. I mean, I, I guess, I guess it was, I think, um, you know, societally, like we get told so many, I was a little, when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. my mom would take me to the supermarket. I'm born and raised in LA. And they would mm -hmm. be like, they would say things like, Oh my God, your little girl's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right. Like she's so pretty. She's so pretty. She's so pretty. Like, so <laughs> you get told that like when you're a little girl, mm -hmm. I didn't find myself even like, Oh my God, your little boy's so beautiful. Oh my God, your little mm -hmm. girl's so beautiful. And then that becomes the important thing, mm -hmm. right? Like that becomes, and then you go through puberty and your nose gets bigger than your face and your ears are like, whatever the changes happen and your body, like for me, in my case, like my body changed overnight. And I was, when a lot of girls bodies don't change to their 15 or 16, mine changed when I was 13. Mm -hmm. And so I guess, yeah, I couldn't at that time identify mm -hmm. that it was a control thing, but I was trying to hold on to like, this identity that I had already been given mm -hmm. by other people, like, oh, she's so pretty and skinny. And like, mm -hmm. you know, like whatever that actually means, it's all in the eye of the beholder anyway. Right. Um, and then suddenly when like, I wasn't like this little tiny skinny thing anymore, mm -hmm. I was trying to hold on to that thing that held value for me. Mm -hmm. I think there's right? so many women, mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, I don't know the statistics, but I truly believe that most women have distorted eating mm -hmm. and it's because of the narrative surrounding beauty was blasted at us from the minute we were old oh, yeah. enough to understand mm -hmm. it. And I, I had a therapy session today and they said like, where did your body issues? Cause I don't have an eating disorder anymore, but I still don't yeah. have good self-esteem when it comes to my body. Right. And she said like, when did it start? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't even know. I don't mm -hmm. even know. There wasn't like a turning point where I said, oh, I remember there was this one time at camp and this yeah, guy right. made fun of me, which I do. That did happen. But I, I, I just always remembered that everyone was always talking about food mm -hmm. and everyone was always talking about beauty and everyone was always talking about size mm -hmm. from the minute I, I from from seven, from when my daughter, my, my first daughter is seven. And I. It's kind of just the experience we've always had as women. And I hope that now we're becoming more aware. And I hope that the narrative is changing, that I have two little girls right now that I'm raising. I hope that we focus more on the other things about women than just their looks, because I worry that if we don't, that women are never going to feel better about themselves or have better self-esteem. But right. Tam, I had to say it's hard because, and like you, Catherine, I catch myself. I also have All a six-year-old yeah. daughter and I, and to other people's kids, I'm like, oh my God, yeah. your little girl's so beautiful. Your little boy's so beautiful. And even to my own daughter, like yeah. I'll catch myself. You're like, oh, you look so beautiful. But then it's like, then that is where the focus goes. You know, he said, oh, should I not say that you're beautiful anymore? Like, wh no. what do you guys think? Do, do, and, he says, yeah. do I, I walk into a room and like, do I say to someone, like even like saying to you, like Kat, if my husband saw you, he'd be like, oh, and he knew you, he'd say, oh, Catherine, you look so lovely today. You right. look so beautiful, whatever. That's what he was taught in his generation, mm -hmm. right? So does he, he goes, he even said to me, he's like, so what do I say? Is it offensive to say it? Is it offensive not to say it? No, what right. do and you I'm, say? I, I personally am not like a, a, enough of like a feminist to be like, how dare you say that I'm pretty? Mm -hmm. I think that that's like, gets a little bit too, too extreme. Mm -hmm. I'm I, I, of course it still feels good when my husband's like, Oh baby, you look so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's just that I think, <laughs> I think the conversations as, I mean, I'm going to be a mother and and all that stuff. I think any day now, yeah. <laughs> even maybe during this podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. Um, it, it's honestly, it could happen any minute. Um, <laughs> I think just like the conversations that parents have with raising their children now are just have to be different. And I think that they probably are different. Like my mom, the conversations that she had with me, I don't think were like, 
they weren't substantive enough like in that yeah you are beautiful but guess what else you are like you're mm-hmm. you're this you're this and you're so much more than that um and maybe some parents are better at that than um or more aware of that i think now just because if we think about like if we were exposed to that kind of stuff in our generation we're the same age right mm-hmm. um i almost wonder though with social media i'm like sort of making a turn that there's so much exposure to beauty now, mm-hmm. right. And fitness and that, that almost like, oh, maybe it's almost better. Like maybe mm-hmm. people are not so blown away by someone right. having perfect <laughs> hair or having yeah. like the, the coolest outfit. Like maybe it almost makes like desensitizes them in a way a little bit. Right. Yeah. And then like, Oh, you can go get like lip fillers and mm-hmm. get this done and that done. And like, and you can look just, I mean, if you want, that's what you care about. That's what you mm-hmm. want. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm not yeah. promoting that, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I'm wondering if it's like, but no, does that, kind of, does that make works. you think about, oh yeah. Does that make you, um, Catherine think like differently about how you're going to raise your child? Like, does it already make you think about the conversations about, you know, beauty, about looks, about, you know, all of those things. Does uh, that already sort of change it for you? Yeah. So I have thought about it a lot, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm struggling with the sun going down. So. <laughs> no worries. Sun. For those who are watching, I've like, got like a big shiny thing on my face. Um, uh, I have thought about that, but since I am having a boy, um, it's, I don't know if people know that, um, since I'm having a boy, it's definitely a different, um, you think about different things mm-hmm, yeah. and I'm kind of a little bit really, I always wanted a girl. Like that was always mm-hmm. what I wanted. And um, now that I'm having a boy, I'm, I'm always wanted both. Let's just be mm-hmm. honest but, about that. But now that I'm having a boy, I'm kind of like, oh, wow, there's there's really different things I need to worry about, right? Mm-hmm. Like to think about, to teach him versus the things I would be thinking about with a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of refreshing because I don't feel like I need to think about those things. I don't think men are as affected by mm-hmm. the sort of societal, like those right. sweet look. And this is, mm-hmm. um, I think men have different issues and different things to worry about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, so all the, those things will be very different from female issues. Although mm-hmm. men play, I realize men play such a big part in, and it shouldn't, but in the way we feel about ourselves, you know, oh, and yeah. even, and even my therapist, I keep saying my therapist, like I'm like seeing my therapist every week. I mean, every day. No, no I didn't. I see her once a week, guys. Yes. Is this, this is the CBS, CBS therapist. therapist. We call her a CBS therapist. She's not I a CBS love a good therapist, therapist. <laughs> but she's on an app and I found her or whatever. Um, <laughs> but she said to me that does your husband, cause I said, you know, I still have bad body image and, um, right. and she said, does your husband ever like say anything to you? And I said, no, like first right. day, I would never marry a man who would <laughs> um, just because I have my own issues and I, I, I wouldn't be able to, to cope. Um, and I said, no, he's never mentioned my body ever. He thinks I'm beautiful. He thinks right. that everything about me, even having two 10 pound babies and stretch marks and Perfect. your skin mm-hmm. moves. And, and he, and he's never, I mean, I honestly think he'd probably like me more voluptuous than less. Right. Um, and she said, well, that's great. And I think it's because he was raised by a very strong mother who that stuff did not fly, you know, like no. the putting down of women in any way. And it happens subtly. Hmm. We we as women hear messages subtly about how our bodies aren't good enough all the time. Uh-huh. And if we're not aware of it, it can seep into our being. And then we wonder why we have all these issues, you know? So raising a son, I don't have a son. I want one, but I think my husband would leave me if I have (laughs) another baby. I'll be like, oops, I didn't know I was ovulating. Um, Give him a couple margaritas. And then I'll have have three girls. You know, I will. But your Um, kids are so cute. Thank you. They are, they're not bags. Um, but yeah, I was just like, they're beautiful. Yeah. See, (laughs) See, I know it always happens. We do raise sons differently. And I would, I would, I think that maybe it's your, pro- maybe you don't have to do this, but maybe on social media, maybe every now and then you can, you can talk about how raising a son is different than a, right. like a daughter mm-hmm. and people would be interested in what you had to yeah. say. Yeah. 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 It's like that, this sort of stepping into motherhood is definitely, I see why so many women, when they have children mm-hmm. on their social media, just their platform totally changes. Like mm-hmm. they suddenly start talking about their favorite mommy products and because it becomes uh, actually my pediatrician who I've, uh, picked as our pediatrician, he wrote a book and it's like, I was just reading the chapter last night about how 
becoming a mom and having a kid, it changes your whole world. Like you suddenly have mm-hmm. new friends that you connect with of, mm-hmm. by meeting just kids, other kids, parents and things like that. So I see why uh, the conversations on their own social pages change because there's so much, there's a whole new world. There's a mm-hmm. whole new territory to learn about. And talking about love, um, because you're having a baby oh. with a man that you love. Um, tell us about how you met David, because he's obviously an idol. You're an idol. See how, what I did there? Uh-huh. Um, two uh-huh. American so many idols. people, <laughs> two, two idols together. Um, how did you guys meet? And how did you like, I love people's love stories. Like, how did yeah. you yeah. know that each he other was, the was one? The one? We didn't try and make that idol reference, but we, I mean, if, if you're really diving deep, you could probably figure it out. Um, but I met him when I was a contestant on American Idol. Oh, you I, did? I, I did. did. I was, that. Um, yeah, yeah. He, that season, I mean, that, I mean, if you remember how massive American Idol was at that mm-hmm. point, it was just like, it was, I mean, they gave us our own security guards to go to the malls to shop. It was like, like every week we would go and it was so unnecessary, but that's Mm -hmm. how important they thought like that the Mm -hmm. show was. And like, you know, if Steven Spielberg is watching American Idol every week, it was pretty Mm -hmm. important at that time. (laughs) It was pretty major. So, um, they had, I say that because they had amazing guests every week, like we get Stevie wonder Mm -hmm. and Rod Stewart and and Andrea Bocelli and David Mm -hmm. Foster. And I remember calling my mom and saying, you're never going to believe who's the guest mentors this week. And, you know, my mom was a huge Andrea Bocelli fan. And so I grew up like listening to all his music. And, and then I said, the producer, David Foster. And I was like, I don't know who he is. And she's like, Catherine, <laughs> David Foster, David you know, freaking Foster. <laughs> like, David Foster, you know who David Foster is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was like, okay. So I grew up idolizing Celine mm-hmm. and that was one of the many people that he like she was already, he'll, he'll credit and to credit her. Cause he's always good at giving credit where credit's due, but he'll, he'll say that Celine was already famous in Canada, but he brought her, he brought her down to America and made her first album with her. And, um, so I was obsessed with Celine obsessed with Mar- I'm not Mariah Carey, well, her too, but he didn't produce her. Um, and, uh, the Whitney Houston bodyguard soundtrack, mm-hmm. I mean, he did like everything that I loved. So anyway, that was when I first met him, but of course it wasn't like, I mean, I was very young and we have a huge age difference. And so I was certainly not, uh, all I was thinking about was the competition and, um, Andre Bocelli and getting through that week. But it was really cool because when I came off the show, I came in second, I didn't win, but I got signed to RCA and they had me, the, the big song that I sang on idol was somewhere over the rainbow that Simon picked for me. He had like said, this is, you know, this is a song that Kat's going to sing, you know, and uh, so RCA had hired David. So I remember like getting in my little, cause I grew up here in LA. So I had my car here and my mom came to the studio and he lived in Malibu at the time, this beautiful, um, property. It was mostly like the house itself. He'll say like, wasn't even that great, but he had this amazing studio with this huge lawn. So it's just like straight out of a movie where I pull up in my little, like Honda civic car. <laughs> so tricky. My first little car that I ever had <laughs> into this like big, beautiful mansion. And, um, had a great session that day and recorded the vocals with him. And I just remember being really, um, you know, I realized obviously at that point how iconic of a producer he was, right. Right. And all the amazing accomplishments he had and being there with my mom and doesn't just talking about music and stuff. So it was a really special day. And then he started taking me on the road, like to do a bunch of, he's, I mean, everyone would tell you that he never says no to a charity event, Mm -hmm. right. He's like always, um, doing the musical entertainment for a charity event. So, but then he always needs singers to sing. So I started mm-hmm. becoming one of many singers that he would take on the road with him. Um, so none of that had any romantic notions whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, although he did like, you know, he did m- make it known that I was marrying the wrong person. Um, oh. I did get married. <laughs> I got married. Uh, I was almost 24. So I was 23. And so I'd already known him for a couple of years now. I'd been done a bunch of get gigs with him and he came to the wedding and played the piano when I sang oh my for my then husband. Um, and, uh, that, that situation didn't work out, but it was, you know, it was, I learned a lot, mm-hmm. but he was just kind of always this person that I really felt honored to know. And to just, mm-hmm. I knew I didn't never had any intentions of him 
producing an album for me or whatever. I, I, and I could, music is like a whole other subject I could go into. I kind of uh, always just in the back of my mind realized I would probably be more of an actor than I would be like a recording artist. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we stayed friends and did a lot of gigs together and got to know each other in a lot of different circumstances. But it wasn't until after I moved back from LA, I went to New York, from New York, I did Smash for two years, did a TV series on Scorp uh, CBS Scorpion for four years. And then it wasn't until like the last two years of Scorpion that we ran into each other in Palm Springs. And uh, I was much more mature. I was 32 <laughs> years old. And uh we had a lot of red wine. <laughs> That's how it always starts. Yes, yep, That's how yep, my yep. babies were made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, he, he invited me and my sister, who I took her to Palm Springs for a girl weekend mm -hmm. to a tennis match because I saw that he was in, ten, uh, in Palm Springs on his daughter's Instagram, may I add you. Um, yeah. um, and he said, come to the tennis match. And I was like, okay. And we went and my sister went back to the, her our hotel and he's like, come stay and party with a bunch of friends. There was like tons of people and we just mm. kept drinking wine and it was just a very different night than all the previous <laughs> years. <laughs> I love it. Sounds like, you know, you guys, that's really, actually really cool to know somebody that long and through mm -hmm. different stages of your life yeah. like that. And then like, when you know, you know, like when it's the time, yeah. it's, it's really interesting what they say about timing, right? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes it is the right person, but it, the time has to be right too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The time has to be yeah. right. Well, and I'm so, I mean, I've always was crazy about him and uh -huh. not in the same way, obviously that I am, that I could realize that I could be. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now of course I'm always like, I wish I'd been with you like this whole time, whatever. Oh. But I would have never worked out because I would have probably been insane and crazy and like, right. you know, had to go through the young 20 something years. Right. That I needed to. Mm -hmm. um, but it's true. It's like amazing that we've known each other as long as we have. And I'm out of breath because I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take a pause. I, know the I, thought, feeling. You, I thought you were having a, con uh, a contraction. contraction. I was like, is it happening right now? This is like, going to go viral if you have the baby the on the podcast. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm literally like trying to, if I seem like I'm in distress, it's only because I'm You don't old. look pregnant. From no. Your, this is the thing because normally you. I'm pregnant. Oh my I'm gosh. So it's so beautiful. When. When I was pregnant, my entire face blew up. <laughs> like I looked pregnant from here down for sure. You do not pregnant. You just not pregnant. You don't look <laughs> Thank you. at all. You well, don't look puffy or anything. You just look well. My feet unkissed. and my ankles and my calves are like all oh. just like one giant unit. Like there's no there's no separation from. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you. But uh, yeah, it, let me just say that when you know, you know, but mm -hmm. it did take me because I knew him for so long and I, I loved him and I liked him. And, but I was really freaked out about like the age difference. I was just like, yeah, I mean, I, I was, it was, it was just not even like that. I was freaked out. It was just like, oh, this is just a fun thing. Like we've mm -hmm. always loved each other, but he, he always kind of, um, not inappropriately, <laughs> not, 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 <laughs> not like when he was in other relationships, but when he wasn't, he always kind of made it known that he, had a feelings for me or whatever, yeah. but I was always like, you're insane. Like, are you're too old for me. And, um, and it's just like, you know, now when we're together, it's it just is right. And it's yeah. some people are never going to get it and we don't care. We're fine about it. You know, it's mm -hmm. just like, he's the best thing that ever happened to me, but he was always the best thing that ever happened to me. Like even when he was just a mentor or someone who gave me privileges of performing and giving me experience or, or giving me a job. Right. Like mm -hmm. it was, he was always special to me. So, um, this, the fact that we are sharing this life together, it's like, I'll still, we'll still be driving the car and I'll like turn to him. And cause I'm like super romantic. I like, <laughs> and I'll just be like, I can't believe we're together. I can't believe I'm with David Foster. And he just laughs. laughs. And you know, like, I can't believe we're having a baby. You know, it's just like, cause I still can't believe it. It's so cool. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's the coolest thing. It's like the greatest honor of my life. Oh, mm, I wish I could sweet. say that about my husband. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Roxy and I are like writing down notes yeah. going, tell my husband he is the best thing while we're, <laughs> yeah. maybe you just need to like live, maybe you just need to have a baby first and then be like, I hate you. Just <laughs> no, it's amazing. It's amazing. Just you I've, always, I've, always date, I've always dated older. Obviously, um, not obviously, but I haven't dated as old, older as David and you are. Well, most people always, haven't. Yeah, but I've <laughs> always dated older. I've always been you know, when I was 21, um, I had a acting coach and he was 52 and I just found him so sexy. There was right. something about 
the knowledge that he had that I mm-hmm. didn't at the time when I was 21, right. that I just found really attractive. And for me, I've always gravitated towards men that know so much about the world. And I've mm-hmm. lived through right. so many different experiences because like I, and everyone's each to their own. Like, I don't want to raise someone. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes when you're with someone and you're, you're, you know, in your twenties and they're in their twenties, you're also raising them while you're trying to like learn about yourself and your own life. And, yeah. and I, I don't know, for me, I've always definitely gravitated towards older. That's just always been my yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, it's so funny too. Like, uh, you know, I, I, going back to social media, I, I actually feel really grateful that my platform for the most part, I have really, I have really sweet, positive people on my, I would say most for the most part, like to give our society some credit, there's always the crazy people. Like I'll, I'll always click on like someone who writes something like, Oh, your daddy issues, whatever. I'm like, let me just see if this person follows me. Usually they don't never they're follow just, you. They right. never they're, follow. They, right. they, just, they follow you, but they don't follow. Yeah, they're just you. Yeah. actively <laughs> looking to, to just, troll. Right. To troll and say something negative. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing that's interesting about like saying daddy issues, or whatever, because I definitely, my father passed like three years ago and I love my dad and I had a great relationship with him. But I will say that I did have daddy issues at one point in my life, like, but when I was much younger. But <laughs> the funny thing is, is that they'll associate people will associate you working out daddy issues with someone who's older than you. Mm-hmm. And in fact, like, actually my most tumultuous relationship that was the most volatile to me, to my like nervous system was someone who was two years older than me, mm-hmm. who treated me like and my dad, this doesn't connect to my dad. Cause my dad treated me horribly. I'm not trying to say that, but when you're trying to fix something right. And you're, I love psychology. I love like I know, childhood. Same. I love going back to your, <laughs> yeah. I love going back to like your, your past and connecting it to your youth and all that stuff. But yeah. I mean, like one of my relationships that I found myself working through childhood issues was, was in a relationship when I was with someone who was the same age as me. Mm-hmm. So it's, I think no matter who the man is and the age difference, like you're active, this is what I believe when you're in a relationship with another person, you're, you're working through stuff that's unresolved issues from your past. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, and some relationships like bring it out more than others, you know? And, um, so it's just always funny to me when I'm like, oh, okay, you're so original, like bring on the comments. It's like, it doesn't bother, it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> like the trolling <laughs> thing. I just like, I, sometimes I just get pleasure out of being, I mean, I never, I'm not, the type of person. I, I never say things like fuck off, like in real right, life. Right. I don't yeah. like saying right. those things to anyone, but sometimes it just feels good to say that even though yeah. oh, God. Yes. it doesn't really, but like your comment doesn't really bother me, but you're just like such an idiot. So I just feel like saying it to you. You know what I do sometimes? <laughs> Tell me if you guys do this. I will type the response and like, I want to say to them, but then oh, I won't yeah. like send it. And I'll just like, but, but it feels like I got it out a little Is bit. that what you do, do to me? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when you're texting me, fuck you, bitch. Okay. Don't no, you feel right. like it comes from? Do you feel like it comes from more of a place of like trying to teach somebody something? Like then, I, I always am like, well, I'll write something, and I'm like, mm. and then I have to delete it because I'm like, I'm never going to teach this idiot something. Right. Never, They're not going right. to learn from They're you. Know, learn. you know, the best thing to do is what I what I've realized is that, and I always say this on this on the show is unhappiness is the fastest pipeline to hate. Mm-hmm. People who are unhappy go yeah. straight into hating other people because they're miserable with themselves. Mm-hmm. And so what I try to do on social media is not is not say fuck off, although I want to, right. as I'm kind of like, I said to this one woman who said, I, I unfollowed you. My husband had COVID and I was really struggling with it. And I wrote an emotional right. post and she was like, you know, who the fuck even are you? People have more pain <laughs> than you, you know, whatever. And I just wrote back, you know, obviously you're going through something because I hear such anger in your voice and anger isn't a primary emotion. It comes from pain. So I'm sorry that you're struggling and I hope you can, I hope you can find some peace. Right. And that I think is a way for people to go. Cause what do you say? What do you say to that? Cause it's the truth. It's the truth. When you're angry, it's, it's not that you're really angry again is not a primary emotion. It comes from pain. Oh, for sure. It it definitely does. Like, and you can, it's amazing because sometimes you can, I would say most of my, if, if I choose to engage are like, more of a trying to ration with somebody or whatever. Right. And when it comes, when you don't attack back, usually their comment response will be like, I love oh, you I'm so sorry. much. <laughs> or like, oh, I'm sorry. I, that I, that I upset you. I actually 
da 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 da. It's like you get the you get yeah. the sort of like peaceful reaction that you want to get. So or like I can't believe I get a guy get a few like I can't believe you even responded. I love you so much on that show. <laughs> and you're like what? That is not an in. That's to be an asshole mm. is not an in. No. <laughs> they well, just want a be. response. They just want well. a response, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh God, it's so many, so many social media games. Okay, so are you ready to have this baby, Catherine? Like, are you set? Ready? Like, have you do- <laughs> have you done the classes? Are you? What are you doing? Um, not m- right now. I mean, not much. Like the obviously, we're still in the middle of COVID, and the mm-hmm. cases are much better in California. So it's mm-hmm. been really a nice treat. Uh, this might sound just like you know, silly, but having just restaurants open back up again oh. here in California. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really upset about it for the restaurants just in general, but just mm-hmm. for business holders and things like that, especially the cases, it, the cases went up in California mm-hmm. when they closed restaurants down. It didn't, it didn't help at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was very upset for business owners in that regard. Um, but selfishly, mm-hmm. I've just been like, you know, cause you sort of feel like you're for women who've had pregnancies during COVID, you're like in this little vacuum. Mm-hmm. You don't get to see, you know, like the cliche things that us girls want to experience, mm-hmm. like see your friends and say like, Oh, your belly, you look so cute. Da, 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 da. I mean, as superficial as it is, it feels good of course. Um, to be celebrated and have people be excited. Mm-hmm. So it's been nice. Like the last two weeks, just to like go have lunch and yeah. see um, even people who work in these restaurants that you love, mm-hmm. like you just want to say hi. And, um, so really not a whole lot, but mostly my week is consisting of like a doctor's visit on a Monday and a doctor's Mm -hmm. visit on a Thursday and going for long walks. And and now at this point, I mean, I'm literally, my due date is today and, um, nothing's happened so far. It will. You must, uh, just after this podcast, we'll make, we'll make (laughs) it spicy for you. We'll send the the juju. Yeah. There (laughs) is that salad, right? You're supposed to eat, right? I've had it. I've had it already. I've had it. It's the kite. It's the restaurant in the Valley called POC. And they have pizza mm-hmm. there as well, but there's this. What a good ploy. It's so cute. And this, is, <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about. It was like so fun. I got to go on Valentine's day with my, meet my sister and her babies and her husband and my husband and just like be out. And there was like two other pregnant women. It was so cute to be like, Oh, how far along are you? And right. you know, one of them's miserable and the other one's just like, you know, trying to get, so it was just, uh, it's nice. So I'm going to do the same thing and <sighs> spicy food and yeah. whatever. And yeah. Sex helps. Sex is supposed Se- to help. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Sex and I actually helps. was try, really try into that. Hasn't worked yet. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, I don't think you were into. Uh, Roxy said that she did not want sex when she was pregnant. I wanted it all the time that yeah. we came. <laughs> like the worst. Pre- like imagine just a pregnant person who's bitching all the time and complaining and be like, lay on top of me and give it to me. My husband was like, you're scaring me. I don't want to be anywhere near you. you no, know, I was like, I need to have sex. It's it's also the logistics and the positioning. Like, oh, who it's, cares? Uh, it's just a, turn around from one side and put your leg up somewhere. I was, Come on, Roxy. So, I was so big. I couldn't get my. I couldn't bend over. I couldn't put my legs up. I was like, it doesn't matter. You can figure it out. Come on, you've done it in a side. car before, Roxy. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Pretty good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely surprised me that it was not something at the top of my list. That I, like, cause like you typically in my everyday life is TMI, but I'm not oh. someone who has like a low sex drive. It <laughs> definitely surprised me during pregnancy. I'm just like, eh, take it or leave it. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> right. It is. It's all about those hormones. And, and, and I do think that being pregnant in lockdown, I, I have, I've struggled with anxiety my whole life. And, and I actually did not struggle with any anxiety being pregnant. Um, cause all the hormones, wow. all that project, cause it's so much progesterone for me. Mm-hmm. I realize that when my estrogen levels, uh, heighten around ovulation, I just, I'm a complete mess. And then when they, they, then your progesterone levels kind of, um, get higher after you've ovulated and that I'm always good for two weeks and I'm always really shitty for two weeks. Yeah. Um, and what when you're period pregnant, are we in right now? Oh, I just ovulated. Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not shitty anymore. <laughs> okay, um, <good. laughs> as of yesterday, I was really <laughs> shitty yesterday, but progesterone is really great when you're pregnant. So like that, like that beautiful, easy feeling, I kind of want to be pregnant again, just to have like a year yeah. off, off of COVID anxiety. Well, it's so interesting. Cause women, um, so some women are like, I loved being pregnant. And some people hate being pregnant. Some women hate, and I'm just been like kind of in the middle. There have been plenty of nights where I was completely miserable. I felt like I couldn't breathe. And surprisingly in my last few weeks leading up to me giving birth, which is any day mm-hmm. I've been the happiest and I've been the most comfortable, um, 
you know, and I'm the biggest that I'm going to be right. I'm towards the end. And I don't know. It's like, and this is the thing is every woman's experience is so different. Mm -hmm. The first trimester was so hard for me. I was like, I mean, I felt like I was going to throw up every second. I was so tired all the time. The exhaustion was like more annoying than being nauseous. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's just great to hear other women talk about things. Cause you'll be like, Oh my God, I was the same way or, mm-hmm. and, and, or you won't be, you'll be totally different. You know, it's so funny too. I think for me, it was the buildup in my mind. Cause I had told myself for so long, Oh my God, pregnancy is going to be awful. Like mm-hmm. delivery is going to be horrible. Like I freaked myself out about it. Mm-hmm. So like when I actually did get pregnant, it was actually pretty great. Like I, I yeah, was like, I it's it. not that bad, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it just, you know, like I had energy, especially in that second trimester, like Ugh. energy, yeah. you know, my skin cleared yeah. up, the nausea went away. The hair was gray. The hair the was sex gray. life <laughs> could have been great, Roxy. Nice. If you just got your leg a little <laughs> higher, for God's I mean, sake. Jeez. <laughs> my hair, my, my hair has been my favorite part of the whole thing. Uh, right, like, right. It's just so thick, but literally, legitimately I go and take a shower and not one strand of hair falls no. out. And, and then it will, it will though. I know. <laughs> it's going to, it's going to, it's gonna be so sad because it's going to come out in clumps and it's just going to, yeah. it'll still be long, but it just won't be nearly as thick and that's okay. But no, I mean, I've definitely had many days and nights where I'm like, this pregnancy thing is not, my mom was so positive about everything mm-hmm. growing up. She's like, Oh, I love being pregnant. She was like, she was always the high end of things. And oh. so I think, I think my experience has been a positive one in that it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's in the middle. Like it wasn't too high and it wasn't too yeah. low. So I always tell new pregnant mamas and this is unsolicited advice, but just give yourself grace when those hormones get mm-hmm. a little, yeah. they get a little topsy turvy. And because I knew from my first pregnancy, I was expecting it for the second one. I think it's right. day three where you kind of just like cry. All, isn't it? Isn't that yeah. the day, the baby yeah. blue day? It's like day yeah. three or day four. Right. So all your progesterone and your estrogen is like the highest it's ever going to be. And then it are drops. You, are you talking about when you give birth? When you give birth. And it's about yeah. the third day where you just are like, what's wrong with me? And, 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 and I knew that for the second time. So when I was on the third day, like what's wrong with me crying all day, I was like, oh, this right. is normal, you know? And I think the more women that talk about that, I think people will be less scared about like, oh, yeah. why am I crying? You know, why am I upset? And then it kind of evens out over the, the I next think day. it's so important for women to talk about the postpartum thing yes. too. I mean, I've had a lot of women uh, who I'm friends with they've given me, which no, no baby advice. It's all been like how they take, how to take care of yourself, which has been really nice. Like even just physically with the, with the pain and like the special mm-hmm. solutions and the pads and the little diapers to wear, mm-hmm. um, healing after, especially if you're having a vaginal birth or whatever. So, right. um, that stuff has been really helpful. And I have been preparing myself to just kind of maybe be a little sad and maybe be a little yeah. down and yeah. be okay with it. And maybe be really down. My sister really struggled with postpartum. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I think always managing expectations and anything is the most important, Yes, uh, managing okay. expectations in a marriage relationships, your birthday party, new year's Eve, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. always managing new year's Eve. Think about like how many disappointing new year's Eve's you've had, right? Every right. <laughs> You're always like, this is going to be the best new year's except Eve. Except last new year's Eve. Cause I was like, oh, this is going to be crap. And it was really uh-huh. good. Except my husband got COVID the next day. So it was oh. like, that was a terrible <laughs> oh, no. um, new year. But I, yeah, when you have no expectations, life is so much better. So much better. Yeah. That's the way we should be living. Right. I mean, you just take it day by day and what comes comes and we don't. I mean, right. I can't tell you how many people told me like that last few weeks, even my doctor, like she's saying, you know, it's going to be, you're, you're really uncomfortable those last few weeks. I've never felt better. I've never been happier. I've never been nicer. Like I'm so nice <laughs> to my husband. Like I, I'm, I, he probably is just always like, where, you know, I'm where is she? Yeah. <laughs> where did she go? <laughs> I'm just like really happy. And so I'm going to suck it up while I can. And my baby room is really cute Aww. and we've got all the things and I feel really blessed and grateful that I had, you know, I didn't get to have like the baby shower dream and all that mm-hmm. stuff, but the, the thing that I did get to have like a zoom with a surprise, it was ended up being a huge blessing. So that's lots perfect. to be grateful for. Yeah. Well, let's do a never have I ever before. Yes. I know we're going to to having a baby. Ooh, <laughs> I know. I'm so glad we got it in. I was like, please don't oh. be pregnant. Don't, please don't have a baby today. Please don't have a baby today. <laughs> please <laughs> we won't speak to you for like six more months. I know. Probably. I'll, I'll go into a deep, dark hole. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, I'm looking after a baby. Don't, don't contact me again. Okay. <laughs> So okay, we are going go. to play Never Have I Ever. And for our YouTube viewers, go to your iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts so you can hear Catherine's Never Have I Ever because you definitely don't want to miss it.
<laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so happy I did it. it was oh my God, so and we got much. you before baby. I mean, I know. Like the timing is. I know. Crazy. I know. I hope by the time this cop comes out, I'll have a new baby. I'll send oh. you guys pictures. And- oh, please do. <laughs> so good. I'm sure you have lots of friends who uh, tell you the truth. But if you ever need any help or, you know, yes. just someone to say, you know what, I've been through it. I have a, yeah. a blog bottle and heels too that we just, um, started again and um we talk a lot about like postpartum depression i'm not saying yeah. that that's something but or anxiety or anything that you ever feel like you're struggling with that it's always good to you know yeah we can we can we'll be a, a, a an ear for you in any way oh, i love that yes. thank you so much always. yeah and Catherine, where should where should people find you what's the best place like just on social media Probably, yeah, Instagram is like the only place that I'm pretty active at Catherine, although it's not Catherine McPhee, it's Catherine Foster because, you know, I took so much pride in marrying the love of my life. So Aww. to the point where I changed it on Instagram. Yeah. So you change Catherine, it on Instagram. It really that's matters. Official. Yeah, that's like big. <laughs> and you know, what's actually kind of sad is that I did this. Um, uh, I started, I did one, ep- not one episode. I did one season of a new show on Netflix, which is coming out in March and mm. Uh, I didn't say that to plug it. Um, what's it called? Plug it. So Tell please it. Plug yeah, it. What's it called? Oh, it's called country comfort. It's a half hour sitcom. Amazing. It's really fun. It's a little family show. Um, it was a blast to shoot it, but my point in telling you that is that I wanted to go by Catherine McPhee Foster and they were like, can we just stick with Catherine McPhee? Cause I feel like people will get confused. Yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> but my Instagram, Catherine Foster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. It's the name thing. I haven't even, t- we, oh, my husband and I were supposed to hyphenate but we just never go around to it because yeah because it's a pain forget. in butt it's, they pain. Know, it's like so everything. much it's, stuff so our kids yeah. are all hyphenated yeah mm-hmm. poor kids Listen, are like, i don't even know what my <laughs> own kid's name is yet so we're <laughs> still we're still trying to figure I it out i feel like you see them sometimes to know yeah we know? had a name and changed her name That's like <laughs> yeah. in the hospital all these videos of me like after c-section <laughs> going welcome morrison to the world welcome morrison <laughs> i didn't have a kid named morrison her name's lennon <laughs> like every, oh. and then i've like saved all these other pictures of another name of what i was gonna her call name her name is lennon that's so sweet her name's lennon oh, lennon, so uh, lennon blue lennon oh blue. well that's a great name I feel like, I feel like they were going to release Tamman from the hospital until she made the name, like put it on the birth certificate. I know, they we kept saying, like, are you yeah. sure that's like, the name? And we were like, like, I don't day know. four and she was like, ah, I'm like, what are you calling this baby? Baby? Like, because yeah. <laughs> they, they all to- came to the hospital because this is pre-COVID and I had four people come to the hospital, um, my BFFs in LA, and they were all like, Let's like pick a name. <laughs> I know it's, it's people are like, is there, that's the number one question you get. So oh. have you picked out a name yet? And like, we have, but we we're kind of just waiting to to hold him and figure out, you know, what suits him the best. That's so, right. This was a pleasure. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. you. And you thank guys you. can find us on Women on Top Official on Instagram and Women on Top Podcast on Facebook. And I am Tamin Sursock. And I am Roxy Manning. And we are Women, Women on <laughs> Top. <laughs> <laughs>